welcome back to Healthy Homemade Baby. Thanks for joining me here at Healthy Homemade Baby, where we turn simple foods into healthy homemade baby food. So, baby is hungry, and baby is ready for protein, but the rest of the family is turning up their noses at the thought of meat puree. <laughs> And who can blame them? But do we really need to cook separate meals for baby and the rest of the family? Absolutely not. Stay tuned for a time-saving, delicious, all-family chicken. It's Steph here at Healthy Homemade Baby, where we turn simple foods into healthy homemade baby food. Chicken, the humble barnyard squawker. Chicken contains essential vitamins, protein, choline, and iron, which support your baby's development and, along with its mild taste, make it a great choice for stage one baby food. Chicken preparation can be as simple as popping it into the oven, which makes it a desirable option if you are also feeding other members of a busy family. Let's get into the one, two, threes of making stage one chicken puree for baby. Number one, Choose your chicken. Chicken thighs are the section of the chicken's leg located just above the knee. Thighs are known as dark meat due to their higher fat content and darker color relative to white meat. Bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs are often the least expensive cut of thigh because they require the least processing. You aren't paying a butcher to remove the bone or the skin. Cooking your chicken thighs with the skin on can help them retain moisture and the skin contributes a lot of flavor in the form of fat. If you prefer skinless thighs, you can purchase them two ways bone in or bone out. Bone in thighs take longer to cook as the bone slows down the rate at which the meat heats up. However, the bone also helps the thigh meat retain its moisture. Boneless, skinless chicken thighs are generally the most expensive of the three cuts as they require the most butchering. However, they are still very flavorful and will require the least amount of cooking time. For this recipe, I'm using boneless chicken thighs. The benefits of not needing to skin the chicken, coupled with the faster cook time of a boneless thigh, make the boneless skinless cut my preference. Whatever your choice of chicken, be it thigh or breast, bone in, bone out, choose the highest quality chicken you can in order to minimize the chemical burden placed on the body. Ultimately, make the best choice that works for you and your family. Number two, prepare your pieces. To prepare the thighs for cooking, I like to trim some of the excess fat, but the jury is out for me on the effects of trimming versus not trimming. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Do you trim your chicken thighs? Does it make a difference in your cook? Today, we're cooking for the whole family, so we're going to choose an oven bake. Arrange your chicken pieces in a rimmed baking dish. When introducing chicken as a new food to baby, it may be wise to leave the chicken unseasoned in its simplest form and to introduce seasonings slowly one at a time to test for allergic reactions. Eventually, you may choose to season your chicken to your family's tastes. I'm using garlic, onion, and parsley here. I'm also coating these thighs with a touch of butter for flavor, which is, again, completely optional depending on your baby's dietary needs. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and cook the chicken for approximately 30 minutes. Cooking times will vary depending on your oven, so you may choose to check it frequently with a food thermometer for doneness. And voila! Sizzling hot, delicious chicken thighs fresh out of the oven. It's very important not to undercook chicken. To avoid foodborne illness, the CDC recommends using a food thermometer to ensure your chicken is cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Number three, puree. At this point, set aside any chicken pieces you wish to reserve for family members with teeth. When your chicken is cooled enough to handle, give it a little pre-choppy choppy with a knife and then transfer your pieces to your pureeing vessel of choice. And before we get into the fun part, please consider subscribing to Healthy Homemade Baby for more videos on how to prepare your own healthy homemade baby food. If you like this video, please hit like. Tap the bell icon and turn on notifications on your phone to be automatically notified when Healthy Homemade Baby posts that next baby food video. To facilitate the pureeing process, you can add a small amount of filtered water, high quality bone broth, or breast milk, and puree away. And there it is! Delicious and nutritious chicken puree, ready to be cooled and consumed or portioned into a freezer-safe container for storage. 
I usually leave my purees in the freezer overnight or until they are solid and easily transferable to my glass jars for freezer storage. Transfer a few portions to the fridge for easy defrosting as needed. Chicken puree can be served on its own or, for variety, try blending chicken puree with other stage 1 fruit or veggie purees. Thank you so much for joining me today at Healthy Homemade Baby. Making homemade baby food does not have to be scary, daunting, or out of reach. With some preparation and a little bit of practice, you too can be on your way to creating your own healthy homemade baby food. Leave me a comment below if you try making your own chicken puree. Let me know how it goes. And follow Healthy Homemade Baby for more baby food videos.